Well, all is well. Good morning. Good evening. Happy Hanukkah. I don't know where I got that from. Religion, right? Yes, we're going to talk about religion. Ooh, that great evil. The harbinger of evil. The child of evil. I'm not even really against evil, but man, that's some stank evil. That's some stinky evil. That's some evil Knievel kind of shit. And, you know, I don't hate people, but I, I hate religious people. I hate the part of people that's just creepily religious. I do. And I, I'm not trying to be smart here. I just, of course, that's not, it's not a particularly uh, legitimate argument to make or anything like that. It's, but it's my crass, cruel, crappy opinion. But I can't stand religious people. And by religious people, I comprehend a lot of different kinds of people, most of which probably don't call themselves religious. Like, for instance, right now, this whole thing, uh, what is it? What is this? This uh, anti-fascist movement. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's all fucking fascism. You want to be anti-fascist, go live in the fucking woods and stop voting altogether. I mean, it's, it's an entirely fascist system. It's an, a perfect example what's happening in the United States between so-called fascists and so-called anti-fascists that you could be so fucking immersed, so completely marinated in fascism that you think there's something that isn't fascist. <laughs> that you think you can take an anti-fascist position in a world that, where you've been immersed in fascism for generations. Fascism is just a, a monopoly. Emphasis on the word monopoly. A tacit, a strategic, even a covert monopoly, uh, an indoctrinated monopoly, um, a ubiquitous monopoly on force and faith. Who can do what, what you think, and what you do because of what you think, or have been forced to think. I live on a disability. My, my idea of health care, my idea of the things that people think, well, if I had lots of money, I would do this, this, and this. I would travel. I could get the best health care. I could buy the biggest house. We could be the safest and secure. You could live in the most secure neighborhood and all those types of things. Um, I, I guess it's not the easiest argument to say you don't really need that much money because that, that's actually a hard argument to make. But I do all of those things without money. If you use your head, you usually don't need that much money. Now, you might say, well, it doesn't take that much brains to go on welfare. Well, um, try getting on disability in Canada and then tell me it doesn't take any brains. Now, I will say this, my only advantage in getting on disability is that I was already, I had already sustained considerable humiliation to my intelligence through most of my formative years, through everything in the world. You might say, so, you say, well, I wouldn't stoop. You know, there's not a lot of people watching this, a lot of not people around you, living around you today, maybe at your coffee shop, maybe on your street, maybe at your school or your workplace, or just walking down the street where you live, right, Who, for whom the idea would pop into their head and go, you know what, I'm going to get on welfare. Because everybody would do it, you'd think, right? I'm going to mention a couple little anecdotes that are just sort of contribute, just just to pepper this this discussion, well, this one-way discussion, I guess. Not really one way, because if you're listening, you know you have thoughts of your own. Uh, one is someone who recently came to me, and they were laboring under a lot of credit card debt and uh, unpaid income tax. They're an elderly, retired woman who still works to make up the you know, to, to have, keep her quality of life. Likes to work. Has managed to live in a very nice place, but needs to, needs to work to keep up the rent. And she's not paying too much, so she's doing a lot of things, right? And uh, she's concerned about, you know, paying all the creditors back. And I said, for one, fuck the credit card companies. You don't have to pay them. That's an unsecured loan. End of story, right? Just, just fuck them. There's nothing they can do. They can take your credit away. That's it. Um, that door is something else. Yeah, it's been looked at. It just might be a bit of a... Might, be a, might have to replace the whole thing. Yeah, it might have to be completely replaced. Yeah. So I'm not 
I like uh, I like quirk. I like quirks. Quirks are okay. <laughs> yeah. I had trouble. It's irritating too long. Oh yeah, I had trouble. Yeah, I had trouble getting it open. Yeah. Wow, you're quick. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh. He does not want anything to do with it. Yeah, okay. He might like it sometime. No. He does not want anything to do it. He won't do it. it. Okay, that's a definite no. Wow. I gotta say, that's impressive. <laughs> not really. You came in, you came out, it looks better. Good job. It doesn't take very long. Yeah. this young girl that works here. So I'll just show you. Hold it. Let me just see. It's oh, impressive. Oh. She just came out and straightened like literally all the chairs and all the tables and wiped all of them. As you can see, and I think under a minute, maybe under two minutes. There's efficiency in motion. Um, I, I have coffee here for a reason. I like the people who work here. And uh, what was I saying? So I said, you know, fuck your credit card debt. And she's like, oh, I can't do that. Luckily, she went to a, a credit counselor through the, a local um, charitable organization, and they told her the same thing. They said, you know, basically, not in so many words, but basically said, fuck your, fuck your credit card companies, that you don't have to worry about them. You know, when it really comes down to it, you don't, you don't have to fork out that money. Uh, you don't have to take my word for it, but the credit card companies are, you know, total sleazebags. You know, they, they have their money the moment you sign, because it's not an invoice, right? A contract has two parties on it, um, so it's just one party. Your signature is actually worth any amount of money the credit card's worth, so they get their money just th from the ink of you signing. Your, your signature is actually worth all the money the credit card will ever be worth. right? And the money you're using isn't new money, isn't making them new money, because they can create all the money they need. right? Um, there's, a, there's a tiered level to what money represents. Um, it wouldn't be sufficient to just say that it's worth power. Um, it's you need to keep the 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 organism of the world is a pseudo human organism or corporate fiction, and to keep that organism alive, you have to move a current of energy through it, just like you'd move electricity through a robot. And money is that electricity, and that electricity moves better with a current that's predicated on hurting people. That is demoralizing them physically, mentally, and emotionally, right? And taking um, industry, taking their sense of personal agency out of their hands and putting it into a larger organism upon whom they are educated to completely depend, even when they attempt to rebel and stuff. Hence the, the completely uh, false dichotomy of fascism and anti-fascism going on in the United States. So it's uh, the blood it's the blood of the purest kind of hatred there is. All kinds of financial exchanges. Um, just buying my coffee this morning for three dollars, you know, that's an act of sedition against my family, against my heritage. You know, you have to, you can't stop it, but you have to try to mitigate it a little bit. Oops, you know. And you mitigate it by... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Here, look, I'll cut myself. I, I was so bad. Here, look. Oh, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'm so sorry. A little flagellation there. Um, bad video. Bad video maker. Oh, God. I think I might need a tourniquet. Um, so they, they've got their money. They've got their money. It's all, everything's bought and sold. You buy something with a credit card, it's all bought. It's all, it's all, uh, all receivership. It's a state of effective receivership all over the world. So everything's kind of owned. And then things, the, the, the peons just keep all the currency. It doesn't really matter. Like you might say there's someone rich and maybe they make a billion dollars with their Oprah. It doesn't matter. It's just matters that things and people continue to exchange money or financial credits. 
They continually work and seek to get things, even though all of their things and all of them are already essentially a static inventory of the controlling fascist um, monopoly. So it doesn't really matter as far as the controlling interests are concerned, what you buy or how much money you have, other than the fact that you're, you're peaked in terms of being never being allowed under any conditions to get a sense of routine, to get a sense of predictability where you're going to start to feel safe. Certainly from one generation to the next where you can start to actually plant more secure roots and actually start to use your brain more. So it, it's basically a form of warfare, psychological warfare. So the mo that money system can be manipulated because it already has so much of your labor, so much of your children. It just owns so much. When you register your children for birth, you're giving them away. You're, when you go for a marriage, you're giving the products of your marriage to the state. You, n there hasn't been an actual mother and father for hundreds of years, uh, especially when, when people are married or common law. When you have that legal contract, your children, you don't actually have the authority over your children anymore. That's why the state can take them away under any pretext. And that's a, that's a metaphysical uh, reality that people labor under every day and they don't even know it's happening. And you wonder why families break down. You wonder why marriages break down. Right, because they took your cock and your uterus when you walked up the nave, let's say you get married in a church, you're walking through the representative organs of the, the, re, the uh, reproductive organs of the state, that's what the church is there for, and then you come with your reproductive organs and offer them at the altar, and the reproductive organs are your children. You wonder why there's so many gay, lesbian, and trans, transgendered people, because they're just fucking, they're fucking with your sexuality all the time. And I find that it's particularly a high percentage of people who are gay, lesbian, and trans who come from religious families, like very religious families. Um, I don't think that's a coincidence either. So you get the combination of hormonal and chemical um, poisoning, and then you get the religious poisoning. And religion, just like money, you might think money is just a thing. It's an energy, and it poisons people. So you want to try to take as much of your autonomous function back from it as you can. It's a well-oiled machine. They've had thousands of years to perfect the cult-like psychology of it all. They've had opportunities to, to watch and research World War II. They were everything. They, they have an opportunity when we're facing our greatest stress to gather data on how we operate under stress, how we did, how we do, and what we do. And they have a total monopoly on it, whether it's through social media or wherever. They know how people react. Um, it's very easy to control civilization. It's extremely easy. Um, it's pathetically easy. Um, you are controlled. We are controlled. Nobody's going to rebel. Nobody's going to get out of civilization. Civilization. There are visible and invisible bars of impenetrable iron around every single fucking person in the world. You're not going to get out of it. You're locked in for good. Your children are locked in for good. There's no point... And I, I'm going somewhere here. It's a little more positive than you think. There's no point in fucking struggling and trying to fucking like bring down this government or bring down the corporations or, or fix the environment and all that shit. Nobody's, nobody really gives a fuck about any of that stuff. That's why. But you notice how people just, they keep going and they keep going because we're, as human beings, we're relentless. We'll just, we can't give up. You know, we'll keep going. And they rely on that. They rely on that. Nobody wants to sit back and be in Right? No one wants to be yin, right? because when the system is put on chemical high alert, it's like, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do, or how can I retreat? Whereas nobody wants to really sit in what their body's actually telling them, because society doesn't have any rewards for that. So I went on disability, I went completely yin, um, uh, don't have a job, don't work, don't have property, you know, um, don't have a girlfriend, all these kinds of things. I, I'm not happy with the brain development of most women anyway. I would never bear a child to them uh, at all for many reasons, and I, I might be more fastidious than the average person, but I'm, I really fucking care. I really fucking care about my children. I just really fucking care about them, which is why they're not here yet. The point is, you do have the powers of observation. Get a credit card, don't get a credit card, understand what it's for. You don't owe them anything. Um, so she was saved that expense with a little bit of knowledge, right? They can't do shit. Credit card companies can't do shit. Unsecured loans can't do shit. Um, then, uh, by the way, uh, I've, I had a couple credit cards in my 20s. I didn't pay them, and I just got another credit card. Uh, I think the last credit card I had was about... A long time ago, 15, 20, or anyway, my credit, I've got credit again. 
They, they, they don't care. And they, they didn't even have it in my history. They don't care. They want to give you credit. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a church, right? They want you to feel guilty about having bad credit, but they want to give you credit. And they make money when you don't pay, and they make money when you do pay. I mean, it, it's a wonderful church, the church of the credit card. And if you look at the credit cards, they have religious symbols on them. Visa is a reference to ISIS, which is a reference to your mother and your birth and your heritage. And MasterCard has the two, the Visica Piscus, which is a, to do with your mother and to do with the organs of your birth. So they know what the fuck they're doing. Right? They have you. They have you by the womb. They have you by the cock in the uterus. That's why all your civic buildings have like that fucking pointy penis looking thing. You know, um, it's just an architectural motif that's, that's used all over the place. You know, Pindar is looking at you from, from every angle. So, uh, credit cards be damned, and then she owed some income tax. And she said, well, they're going to garnish you know, my, my pension if I don't pay it. Well, have they ever garnished your pension? No. I said, well, well, don't pay it. If they do start garnishing, they're not going to take as much as they want you to pay them now, which was $250 a month for two years. And I said, fuck that. You're not going to pay any more of that. It's like, no. Uh, the government is a corporation. They make trillions of dollars. They've never been in debt. They've never had a deficit. They do not operate at a deficit. And there's no business in the world that operates as a deficit. Uh, people think that their government's like Jesus. It's this long-suffering guy hanging on the cross and, and just bleeding money. Don't you understand? Like, your governments are fucking Christ. It's a religion. Oh, we're bleeding money. Oh, we're bleeding money. We need more taxes. We're trying to give you as much as we can. We're sorry we can't give you the best health care. It's just, oh, it just costs so much to take care of you. And what with the environment? Oh, God. It just keeps you under that stress, under that alert all the time. And that's a religion. And again, I don't want anything to do with people who, who, who live in that religion. Go look at the actual official ledgers of any government. They make trillions of dollars. They're invested in tens of thousands of businesses all over the world. Uh, they're umbrella corporations. They pay money to each other. They don't... It's not politics, it's business. It's, it's religion. People talk about the separation of church and state. There's no fucking separation of church and state except in your own mind. They sold you on that separation. It's all church. When you look at church as a monopoly on force and faith, it's ecclesiastical uh, military uh, warfare and it's been going on for thousands of years. And we're so inured to it, we have these arbitrary designations of peacetime and wartime. There is no peace in this world. You're always at war. You're, you're like Adam and Eve in the first few pages of the Bible. You are under attack. Every word, every space, every loop, every flourish, every dot, every bit of punctuation, every fucking organ of your birth and the ability for you to communicate life through your family. That's what's happening. That's why you feel the way you do. That's why the world is the way it is. So, religious people. Just using your head, you can exhume yourself from a lot of the unnecessary strife that people suffer, religiously. I don't quibble, I don't have to quibble income tax because I don't work at an employment. I got out of that racket the racket of employment. There's armed forces and there's labor forces and they're the same fucking forces. They're using your arms to do their work and to move shit around to keep people under enormous stress. And you get sick. As so many people, I live in a retirement community in my own family and uh, they get sick. They retire, they get fucking sick because they work too hard. They fucking work too hard. The, the, the people I was assaulted by on the beach the other day um, who got their just desserts, um, they work too hard. They've been under stress. And here's a really important part about indoctrination. If you're under enough stress as a child, you will do whatever the world demands because going forward becomes an exceptional option under any guise because you can't and don't want to go back. When you're scared to live in your own family, you're prepared to live in the world. And that's what every family goes through. Kids don't go to school and go to work because they want to. They be, they've been fucking frightened and converted to a religion where they feel happy and wonderful about dancing off to their local fucking job to get some money. Hey, morning, Jim.
birds get pretty noisy when they're eating that stuff. It's pretty cool. They actually fight over it too. They do. Yeah. <laughs> That's too bad, yeah. <laughs> they can't share. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, I like watching animals. I like anything. Birdies. Got this, this gentleman here. He, he, um, he used to be uh, homeless in Vancouver, a local major city. He comes here, hardly talks to anybody. I tell you, he's the nicest guy I've ever met. Says little but what he says, you know. Fuck, dude, right? He's a total dude. And he feeds the bird every day. Doesn't get in anyone's business, and no one's business gets into his life. He's got it fucking figured out. He's my mentor. When I stop making videos, when my camera breaks, and somebody finally realizes that they need to cancel my account because it's just too good or too bad, I will sit around and feed the birds well into my dotage. You know, so, so kids go off, and I've watched this, by the way. I have friends with children, and I see... I've had conversations with them and they tell me how stressed they are in their home and I know their parents and I know their parents are mentally deranged and I know all their friends are mentally deranged, all their parents' friends are mentally deranged. They're, they're on antidepressants, they're, most of them are single, it doesn't matter if they're not. Their children are already hypersexual, they're over-eroticized, um, they're chemically poisoned, they're going to fucking these gulags fucking 200 days of the year, and I'm really, really, really anti-education. I'm fucking anti-education system. I think it's disgusting what we do to our kids. It's disgusting that I was sent there. It's disgusting that, that children are forced from the age of five or six to spend uh, whatever it is, uh, 12 to 20 years in these fucking systems. They, you're not getting terribly enlightened. And the only thing they have to offer, and the only thing anything like that has to offer, is because it is so challenging to your intelligence, it can raise your intelligence. It's that simple. And that's how I see life. Whatever it is, it's a challenge to my intelligence. And my, challenge, it, my intelligence has shown me that it is worthy of that challenge. It will take it on. And that's why I chose to go on disability. So, um, if you think it's easy, give it a shot. If you think it's stupid, or easy, give it a shot. If you think you can't go and do anything productive with your life, if you don't contribute to the armed forces and the labor forces, we're coming up to Labor Day, which is, of course, a total corruption of everything that labor actually has to do with. There's, you know, we could quibble about how much someone should work and pull their weight. Do you think any fucking child in the world, if left to their own devices, would just do shit and pick their ass and eat it all day? You think we're that fucking stupid baboons? You think you'd do fucking nothing all day? Now, when children are younger and under the, the stresses that they are, they will quite often want to just sit around or lay in bed all day because they're fucking under stress. And their brain, as they get older, is actually more vulnerable than it was when they were fucking born. So, I'm not talking to you, the viewer, but I'm, I'm talking to people out there. Don't be so fucking stupid. Everyone wants to do something, if they can. They want to do something. And if they can't, it's because they're not able. Not because this idea, this, this idea that you're just lazy, or this idea that if left to your own devices, you know, you'll be an evil genius. I watched an episode of NCIS, a crime investigation show, very popular in the United States, and I started listening to the subtext of the plot. Now, granted, I was on Amanita muscaria mushrooms at the time, and it was fucking very attentive. And I could see the subliminal programming. It was at the childlike level of a child is really smart, almost too smart. And it's a very thin line between being a smart that serves the world and serves the forces of good and a smart that serves the forces of evil. And it was very, not very confidence-inducing. Look at Islam. Look at religion. Don't trust yourself. In Islam, shaitan is so powerful that every time a child is born, Allah makes sure that a demon is born. And that shaitan is so manipulative that he could convince you of everything to do with Allah and it wouldn't actually be true. So what are you left with? You have to take the most literal interpretation of the text by the most laudable terrestrial authority. Now, I have a theory that religious people, and particularly religious people, because everyone's religious, but particularly religious people, people who, who demonstrate themselves as particularly religious, know that their religions are shit. That's all Muslims know that religion is shit. 
They, of course they know it's shit. Right? When you, when you have something, when you're sitting on something, let's say, that, that deigns to call itself divine intelligence, right? You don't go around beating people over the fucking head with it. You don't have to bow on your fucking knees five times a day and make sure you have a compass and you do it in the right fucking direction. Okay? That's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. It's insane. You respect people's intelligence. You don't... I don't care how many fucking people you can get, which is telling in itself to worship the words of an illiterate pedophile from the 5th or 6th century. A genocidal pedophile of that, who hated Christians and Jews. He loved them when he was first writing the Quran because he wanted to convert them. He saw them as sources of income and power. And when no one, not even his own family, wanted to fucking be a part of his so-called religion, that's when he farted, started killing and extorting money from Christians and Jews. He's the first guy that came up with it, or whoever was working with him, the yellow star and the, the belt that Christians had to wear to identify themselves so they could be extorted and taxed whenever somebody wanted to or be killed. How do you take over half the world? You get money off of them. You get compliance. And who do you give your money to today? Hmm? Same thing. What do, you, what do you think fucking happened to the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire? What do you think fucking happened to them? Boop! They just went away. They got too big. They got too decadent. They collapsed. Oh, the British, the British Empire. Oh, it's gone. The American Empire. Oh, it's the last superpower in the world. Oh, spare me. I was listening to a Christian talk about the New Testament Bible, and she said, "I'm cha the older people are the worst. I was like, I'm changing my name to Lydia. Why? Oh, it's from the Bible. Paul uh, converts a lady named Lydia. She sold the color purple. She sold the color purple. Yeah, I don't really like purple, but I like the name Lydia. Where's that? It's in the book of Acts. It's like, oh, that's in like, do you, do you want to read it? It's like, well, I don't have a Bible. Oh, you don't have a Bible? No, but I'm familiar with it. I grew up in a family with Christian missionaries and, you know, in, a, in, in a, a town with the most churches in North America per capita. It's in the first five books uh, of the Bible, right? No. Oh, let's see. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Oh, yeah, right. And this is a person who professes to be a professional Christian. She doesn't even know the Bible that fucking well, right? She's an idiot. That's the point. And she, she knows it's fake. She knows it's idiotic. And so much as you know that Harry Potter doesn't exist, but you do know that Harry Potter represents things that are undeniably compelling to the kind of mind that's been conditioned to think that Harry Potter is a credible character. So you could make two arguments. One, that religions are fiction. But make no mistake, fiction is just as influential as if it were real. It has a real effect. Harry Potter is a disgusting series of books. It's an absolutely pathetic series of books. Can you believe we can get a woman author who's ostensibly an educator of young children to write books like Harry Potter? They're disgusting. They're intellectually disgusting. They're metaphysically disgusting. They're criminal. They have absolutely no semblance of respect for the intelligence of children, much less the intelligence of children who suffer as much as they do. But it does speak to and placate that suffering in a way that generally tends to magnify it. If you look at how a child responds to Harry Potter, you'll see exactly how religions work. Exactly. Study those books and you'll know exactly what, what the fucking psychology behind all religions in the world is. How easy it is to pass it off, whether it's a fiction, fake or false, it doesn't matter. It has the intended effect. It doesn't matter if somebody ceases to be Christian. It doesn't matter if they say, oh yeah, I think it's all fucking fiction. Maybe they find the first page of the Bible and it says, to Mary, all the characters in here are fictional. It doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter if the Bible's fictional or not. It has its intended effect. The Bible's power is not that it's necessarily true. It's in the fact that it doesn't matter if it is. That's what you really have to contend with. Again, we've got governments that are hanging on the cross all over the world, bleeding money. They rise, they fall, they live, they die. 
and so do the people with them. And they keep going under their jobs and paying their fucking 20, 30, 40% fucking taxes. And not just in income taxes, because they're working for the banks. If you're paying a mortgage, you're working for the bank. Everything around you, the prices, inflation, it means that everything you fucking do, 90% or more of your fucking labor that you think you're doing to take care of yourself and be a noble citizen who's not on welfare is fucking going to the very people who are the most well-organized threat to you and your family in the history of the world. And you think you're smarter than me. You think you figured it out, hey? Because you were placed in conditions by your own family, God bless them, where it was easier to move forward than to go back, to go back into yourself. When I was a young man, I went into myself. I spent a lot of time meditating, walking, just funking and thinking, not even about anything in particular. I was, I was fucking overwhelmed by it all. I still am. And then I, I decided I need more time, so I got on welfare and I got on disability. And I've been on that ever since. And I watched my greatest power. Whatever, if, you, if you credit me with any intelligence at all, it's one word, observation. I just fucking pay attention. You'd be surprised. Because observation is not about having good eyes or good ears, although that's part of it. What makes them good eyes and good ears is that you have the courage to hear what you are hearing. You have the courage to see what you are seeing. That is what reason is for. That is what the brain is for, to figure out what you're seeing, what you're hearing. And you'll notice that most people don't want to hear what they're hearing. They don't want to see what they're seeing. They don't want to listen to this video. They don't even want to entertain it. There are people who have PhDs who don't even fucking want to think about five fucking seconds of this video put together. They don't even want to consider it. They don't want to give it any credence whatsoever. In fact, I would go so far as to say that they're cognitively unable to do so. You couldn't provoke them to even seriously consider a minute of this or any of my videos seriously and ask themselves, what if it is true? Even though it's as plain as the nose on my face, which is a big nose. And you know what they say with guys with big noses? They have long fingers. Ah, <laughs> oh, I love it. Five views. Bring it on, baby.